Hello, welcome to a new episode of Talk Turkey. Hi, Nevşin. How is life in Turkey? I see that there are some interesting developments, including new sins like going to Starbucks nowadays. Oh, yeah. I mean, Starbucks, Coca-Cola, McDonald's, Burger King, they're like under a lot of uh, pressure, I'd say, uh, from the pro-Palestine sections of the society, which are the majority, basically. So, uh, I mean, we don't have in Turkey these um, large gatherings or large rallies uh, against Israel like you guys have in Europe, like in Berlin or in London. I think London was the most crowded rally ever right recorded yeah. i mean in the last couple of decades i don't remember or like the war on iraq time maybe we had something similar but anyhow we don't have such uh, stuff basically mm-hmm. you know we don't have these gatherings and rallies and stuff but like rather like these individualistic people who are feeling feeling for side for gaza and children gaza and, uh, people they go to um, starbucks And they basically warn people drinking Starbucks coffee not to drink that because Starbucks is uh, like supporting Israel, they think. Or there are these campaigns of like, let's not drink Coca-Cola, they're they're supporting Israel, that sort of stuff. So uh, basically the reaction is towards the private brands. Mm -hmm. Well, that's rather unusual here because many people don't even associate those brands with, with Israel. But yeah. The situation is rather unique in Turkey, I guess. But in any case, I mean, it's not the topic of this video, but uh, I guess it's still interesting for the viewers. Uh, the topic is uh, the new leader in the main opposition party, uh, Özgür Özel. Um, actually, we talked about this possibility when we discussed uh, the opposition uh, some weeks ago. Uh, and there was a party congress of the CHP, Republican People's Party. You were there as well. So I was there. Um, maybe you can start and you can also share how the party Congress was, who is elected, who is yeah. Mr. Rosell, and do we sh- should we expect any change, most importantly, probably? CHP Congresses are always fun to watch. But I think because it's the only party who has some, I mean, who has part like the democracy within the party really it's the oldest party of turkey they have this tradition and they have the they, you know usually chp do you have the different contenders like candidates for the for the chairmanship of the party and everybody campaigns and delegates you know the party is delegates 1600 or so delegates you know they really vote and everybody's trying to talk delegates into voting for them and this and that there's a lot of politics going on it's really always always there's a lot of action And this time, and last time, there was one time there was pandemic, so they they did they cancelled it. And one time it was after the local elections, I remember. And uh, in the local elections, so CHP had this somewhat like historic win. So, but back then the chairman of a party, CHP Kemal Kılıçdaroğlu, was very strong. I mean, he was like his leadership was not being contested because they got five major cities of Turkey. So he was really strong. So it was not a you know. He was not being challenged or anything. But after the last election, 14th of May, it was a disastrous loss uh, for the opposition. Obviously, people started, you know, the like questioning the chairmanship of, of Kemal Kılıçdaroğlu. And people expected maybe, you know, because he was always seen like this, um, how shall I put it, humble, like, uh, you know, above, above the daily political uh, arguments kind of guy, you know, like a humble, wise leadery type he was seen that way um and so people expected you know after this loss probably Kemal Kılıçdaroğlu is going to resign himself you know he's going to say okay this is enough for me and now I'm giving my hand basically or the chair to like a younger leader from the party or someone but this did not happen basically he wanted to hold on to his chair he's like you know what I'm not leaving my chairmanship but I'm going to continue I'm going to I'm going to run again and I'm going to win this you know Congress and everything, but the thing is, so the, so the sentiment uh, in Turkish people is like, you know, after after this fifteenth of May elections is lost, now people lost somewhat belief in the process. 
no matter what. So people were saying, I was asking people, you know, like regular people on the street, and they were saying, you know, I mean, they were saying Klisterol is going to stay, he's going to hang on to this leadership because, you know, it doesn't change, nothing changes in Turkey. You cannot change politics with elections, even inter-party elections, it does, everything is going to be the same, so people are kind of hopeless. But CHP, within CHP, it was, it was there, there was action, basically. I was talking to, so while, I mean, we have been seeing two wings, one Kılıçdaroğlu, pro Kılıçdaroğlu wing, and the pro change wing, uh, basically led by Özgür Özel and Ek- Ekrem İmamoğlu. Ekrem İmamoğlu is the mayor of Istanbul. So they were like, this was the pro change wing and pro change people in the CHP were saying, we are going to win this and you will see. And I was like, I wasn't, you know, I was like kind of suspicious. So I was like, okay, let's wait and see. I Because was also the expectation was that Kılıçdaroğlu was really controlling the party, right? Exactly. Exactly. You're right. That's what I'm saying. I mean, people lost belief in the system. People felt like, you know what? Kılıçdaroğlu has his chair. He's controlling the party. You know, they have a balance with Erdogan, whatever. Erdogan has his presidency. Kılıçdaroğlu has his power in the party. CHP has their has its own power in five big cities. They're all happy with that. Nothing is going to change. But then when I entered the Congress hall, it was you know, you sensed it was in the air, actually. People were really, they were really, I should say, you know, like basically there was energy, especially in the pro-change wing, pro-change side of the party. I, nearly whole day I was there, people, because, you know, in CHP, basically in the right parties, you don't see like, there's usually only one contestant or one candidate for the for the chairmanship of the party and then they talk and everybody votes for them it's finished but chp it takes like two full days and everybody who wants to speak like delegates uh, and mps and stuff they speak i listened to all speeches and all speeches all people who took the who who, who spoke at the at the congress they criticized kemal kılıçdaroğlu they criticized him Because they thought, so Kılıçdaroğlu tried to make these alliances with right parties, basically, with the conservative parties. They criticized him a lot for this. They they mentioned, you made us vote for, you know, these people who have nothing in common with CHP, nothing in common with our principles, with our, with our policies. We led these people into the parliament who don't even believe in any principle of CHP or any principle of left democratic politics. So they really criticized, they were criticizing Kemal Kılıçdaroğlu and late at night it took like, I think it was, so in the first two, like uh, you have to get like basically most of the votes, uh, you had to get 684 votes from the delegates to be able to uh, elect it as, as, a, as the party chairman. And in the first round, Özgür Özel only get 682, so only only two missing. But then, you know, you take the second round, the second round happens in the very, very same night. And everybody expected, you know, it's like only two votes. Everybody expected Kemal Kılıçdaroğlu would just retreat, you know, he just say, okay, it's obvious, we don't need to go for the second round, it's obvious, I'm handing it to Özgür Özel or something. And it was really like 2 a.m. or something, right? 2 a.m., he did not. Yeah. You know, there were speculations, is he retreating or is he going to continue, you know, and then he did not. He's like, they went for a second round. And of course, second round was, had been a disaster for Kemal Kılıçdaroğlu. And actually, traditionally, what happens is that like the old leader, they all come to the stage traditionally. And the old leader hands the leadership to the to the new new leader, basically. But Kılıçdaroğlu did not do that. He just hopped on his car and he left. Also, this was like a scandal. But that night, yeah, so this is that night Özgür Özel takes, takes the stage and talks. Uh, Ekrem İmam, this is when they were listening. And Ekrem İmamoğlu was uh, with him all night long. So this is a new era for CHP, obviously, and for Turkish politics, I'd say. Yeah, and also in terms of maybe a few words about the party congress in Turkey, because there are many problems in Turkey, but political involvement is really at a different level because... I've seen some party congress in Western Europe too. I mean, in Turkey, we're really talking about, I don't know the crowd, but we're really talking about tens of thousands, right? Like it's like a full, a huge place. People are really like singing, supporting. I don't know, like it's like also long, long, long event. I mean, people were voting in the middle of the night at like one or two a.m. It was also incredible in terms of this sort of political involvement. 
which also shows a lot, I guess, in terms of country, but also uh, sort of potential for future. I mean, the positive side, of course, Özel seems to be very dynamic at the moment and showing certain signs of a different kind of leadership and opposition. But of course, uh, we should also be cautious in terms of expectations because CHP is not an easy party to change. So we need to see whether he can realistically make a major change in the in the coming months. One point is probably clear. There was really a great disappointment among the opposition voters after the uh, elections, as you said, it was really disastrous for uh, many voters. Uh, but especially, I think, for the CHP voters. Uh, former leader and presidential candidate who surely became probably the uh, most unpopular person in Turkey, even probably the most hated person in Turkey. There was like a Black Mirror episode like this, most hated in the nation. Um, and if he remained in power, probably there was a risk of voters punishing CHP in the next municipal elections as well. That was the expectation. With Özel, this dynamic is slowly changing. Most importantly, uh, there is some sort of renewed hope among opposition voters. Actually, we stressed that as well after the elections. There was a big disappointment, uh, but, but we keep saying that Turks function in really a strange way. I mean, even in the darkest days, somehow people find new reasons to renew their hopes for the future. Um, that's also why I call Turkey as Republic of Cautious Optimism. Um, of course, the level of hope is much lower, I mean, compared to uh, the period before the elections. And the current situation is really depressing. I mean, very depressing, to be honest. But we can certainly see, I believe, a renewed hope and at least some level of enthusiasm again among the opposition voters. That's important, especially among the CHP ones. Um, and it's not just about Özel, because uh, you mentioned, but we need to make this, I guess, very clear. De facto, actually, uh, there are two leaders at the moment in CHP. Uh, on the one hand, Özel, officially the chairman of the party, uh, but they sort, sort of teamed up with uh, mayor of Istanbul, uh, Imamoğlu. And he's certainly very influential, too. Uh, and I think it was also an important victory for him, like his image as a winner, because in Istanbul, actually, he won two times, including the rerun of elections. And this can be considered as a new victory because he started, in a way, this um, demand for change. He had this manifesto of change following the elections. Uh, it was to change the opposition, but uh, also provide some sort of hope to voters for the future, for the democratic future. He also established a website uh, calling for change. Um, and one sentence was really important, and I think we are going towards that way, at least with this results. He said, we cannot really behave as if nothing happened. And we cannot insist on making the same mistakes and expecting a different result. So uh, I think at least from the perspective of CHP, uh, people are trying to do something else now. And most importantly, Mamola did that in a very subtle way. And he was even criticized by many people because he didn't really start uh, a war against the leadership. It wasn't really an aggressive uh, campaign period. He wasn't really targeting. Despite provocations coming from the, from the leadership, I think he was really the calm, peaceful, uh, always providing like uh, people with hope, but also positive messages. So, of course, one a question can be asked by the viewers why he didn't run for the party presidency then if he started this. I think it's important to clarify that too. Uh, there are several reasons, but the first of all, of course, the municipal elections, because if you are a party chair, you cannot run for a mayor position. And of course, being mayor of Istanbul gives him a lot of power and he's still very popular in Istanbul. And he doesn't want to lose that. Of course, it's not. There's no guarantee that he will win again. But I think he's uh, ready to take that risk. Um, and also, he sees probably the Istanbul election as a sort of preparation for the 2028 presidential elections because 
uh, if he can continue with his this like winner profile, uh, he will probably place himself as the most um, obvious candidate of the opposition for 2028 as well. So that's also important. Um, and that also explains the strategic choice. I mean, it's also a big risk if he doesn't win the elections in Istanbul. It may also reduce his chance uh, for running for the presidency. Uh, that's also an important element um, because AKP will still use, I think, its best resources, um, will campaign very aggressive way. Um, we will see again the propaganda machine and it will be working directly against Imamul as well. We already see it. I mean, in pro-government media, uh, they always find some some negative news about Imamul. If they cannot find, they, they come up with uh, such news. So, but unlike the presidential elections, I think there is one different dynamic now. Uh, this time we know the opposition's candidate, or at least the most, uh, the strongest opposition candidate, but we don't know the candidates uh, of the government yet. There are speculations about few names, uh, and certainly there will be someone with a high profile, uh, but at least uh, the opposition side is ready, but from the CHP side, of course, because mm -hmm. We will probably talk about this. There's no electoral coalition alliance anymore. And it seems to be a bit complicated as well that we need to uh, discuss probably separately. But I will conclude with uh, one more thing connected to this Özel Imamoğlu um, team, uh, because that's also a potential risk, of course. I mean, we don't see such things in Turkish politics very regularly uh, if they will be able to really work as a team. Mm -hmm. So if this cooperation will work well, but in any case, we can talk about new dynamics in the opposition. Um, I think you can tell us maybe more about whether sure. this can really bring in some sort of change uh, or shouldn't we have like uh, high hopes about it? Yeah, I mean, uh, everybody's cautious about having high hopes after the 15th of May elections, but one of these uh, polling companies, Yonela, um, I mean, I don't know if we can trust any of these polling companies anymore because most of them did not, were not able to basically see the result of the 15th of May election. So I think they are in their own fallacy, I guess, or they, they have a lot of wishful thinking and most of them are just projecting this wishful thinking to their work. I mean, maybe so, but just to give you an idea. And that's, you know, he just, he just became the chair of CHP like a, more or less like a month ago. So he's pretty new. So it's like kind of early to say something, but... Yeah, they asked, do you think Özgür Özel will be successful? But they asked the whole voters, like also voters of AK Party and MHP, and uh, you know they answered also. 40% thinks Özgür Özel will be successful. 47.6% think he will not be successful, according to this poll. And um, they asked, what do you think after the Congress? Um, how do the voters uh, see perceive CHP? The ones who say positive is 35.9%, uh, who say negative is 10.3%, who say there's no change is 49.2%. Uh, and they asked which party thinks um, positively, which party thinks negatively. Well, 69.7% of AK Party voters think Özgür Özel will not be successful. Only 13% of CHP voters think Özgür Özel will not be successful, you see. And also in E party, which is the main center-right party of, I mean, still, the opposition, 64%, 64.3% of E party voters, they think Özgür Özel will be successful. And HEDEP is the Kurdish party, 53.7% think Özgür Özel will be successful. So you can see... Within the opposition, people were expecting some change within CHP because at the end of the day, it was a failure. And as a leader, if you fail in more than like 10 elections, obviously you have to go. Other people, people start believing that party. Basically, people are expecting this within the opposition. So they, they seem to be happy with this change. They seem to be happy with Özgür Özel. He's at least younger. He comes from Manisa, a, um, you know, Aegean town. Uh, you know, in many many is an actually interesting city. There's also both industry and also agriculture. I mean, it's one of the most industrial cities of Turkey, and the agriculture is huge. You know, there is olive oil production, figs, grapes. You know, typical Aegean city basically, and mostly um, it is a migrant city. 
Özgür Özel himself also he's a volcanic Turk. Uh, his one side comes from Saloniki, the other side comes from um, uh, Skopje, I think. So, you know, he's one of these volcanic Turks. So, so, so like, uh, does it matter? You know, to some extent, I think it does, because it is a part of demographic reality of Turkey. Mm. So, so there is and that. And also chair of E party is also. Uh, from chair of E party, Meral Hanım is also. Hanım is also yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, I think, from Skopje also. So, yeah. So you have you have that. And, you know, it's it's like a new energy, younger. And Özgürsel is very active. He's like now he's either on TV or he's participating some protests. He's on the street all the time. I mean, he's like he was walking with the with the workers the other day, basically, you know, with their protests now. And he promised that he said more active CHP leading the opposition movements, you know, leading NGOs even, uh, you know, paving the way for them. And fighting for democracy will be everywhere, all the time, you know, 24-7, that's it. So, you know, he's trying to fulfill his promises. And he has the energy because he's young and everything. And he's, like a, he's an interesting figure. He ra also runs marathons, you know, he's, he's that type. You don't see that often in Turkish politics. You see you see all these more traditional mm -hmm. white men, you know, uh, type type of guys. But yeah, as good as it is more like a, more like a you know, left figure uh, who... who, who who looks um, more positively towards freedoms? A I'd bit say, more in European type. Of Europeanized, yeah, yeah more Europeanized. Same, I guess same with Ekrem Imamoglu, right? Yeah, similar with Ekrem Imamoglu, who is the who is the mayor of Istanbul. Yeah, you explained that very well. But yeah, now it's like they are sharing the leadership of CHP. If, if this is going to work, let's see. I mean, on the paper it looks perfect, but you know the leadership chair is. Some, I mean, positively and negatively, sometimes a magical chair. Once you sit on that chair, you don't want to leave or you don't want to share your power. So we're going to, I mean, we're going to see in time. But yeah, there are local elections approaching. They have to be working really hard for that. And uh, Erdogan wants to take back Istanbul, but it's not going to be easy because Istanbul turned into an opposition city. We have been seeing this in the last, I don't know how many elections, in the latest presidential referendum, like you see, Istanbul voting no, for example, or presidential election, like it, Tayyip Erdogan is not leading in Istanbul. So Istanbul turned into a, like an opposition city with a slight difference. So Im Imamoğlu has a chance, but of course it's going to depend what the Kurdish party is going to do. They may run, they might try to run with their own candidate. And also E party, the center right party, which is basically collapsing these days, by the way, they have huge troubles. Uh, E-Party MPs are resigning one after another. So people are really disturbed by the corruption uh, rumors within the party. The, you know, the rumors are some people paid to become um, E-Party MPs, basically. You pay E-Party, you know, through illegal ways, and they put you on an MP list, you become an MP, you get immunity. And 80% of E-Party MPs are somehow business people, you know which is also an interesting coincidence. So everybody's talking about that, bribing bribing the party to become an MP. So, you know, most Syrians' names or uh, like uh, some big guns of the party, they've been resigning. So it's really hard to see the future of E-Party these days. So, you know, after the election, look at this E-Party is dissolving, but CHP is evolving. It's going to be an interesting, interesting local election. And we don't have much time left. Uh, the, the elections are 31st of March. And the rumor is Erdogan is going to start picking his candidates um, in December. And CHP, because those gurus are promised to run um, inter-party processes no matter what. So the party parliament is going to have to like basically ratify all the candidates of CHP. I mean, let's see. I mean, at least specifically for Istanbul, what we can say, I mean, also in line with what you have been explaining, uh, probably the AKP or the government alliance, they have less than 50%. But if the opposition side is not unified, then they may still win. Actually, when you go back to 90s, that's also how uh, Erdogan won first time. I think it was, what, 25 or 26%? Yeah, 94 so, um, yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, that's going to be the main challenge. And... It's not going to be that easy this time to form a kind of electoral coalition, alliance. Uh, but there are also different options. Of course, it all depends on 
developments, especially in e-party and the cooperation, uh, direct or indirect cooperation, because that also we don't know with the pro-Gurdish party. Uh, but also there are different options. And as you said, there's also still some time for such arrangements as well. I mean, we don't even know about the government candidates. So we have some time. And also there is one pragmatic way. So uh, parties may still come up with some more creative solutions than a full-fledged um, alliance, let's say. Um, and there can still be some sort of cooperation in at least some big cities, including Istanbul. But it's not the only way either. I mean, uh, there may also be a consolidation of voters around around the candidate as well, who has the best chance of winning. Because uh, in a way, there are many problems in Turkish democracy, but voters are uh, sort of experienced uh, in all these uh, processes. So uh, we can also see uh, this sort of thing happening, like a candidate, uh, if they see that, has a good chance. Uh, people may also consolidate, even if the opposition parties don't do that, because there's also a rather big uh, public pressure usually on opposition parties. And I believe that mm -hmm. a few months before the elections, we will see that again, because obviously people like, especially in Istanbul, Ankara, big cities, uh, this is sort of their last hope. I mean, keeping those at least uh, municipalities, that's really important because that way, of course, you cannot balance the government policies, but at least you can say that we are still here and we are very visible and we are ruling the big cities in Turkey. So that message is still uh, very important, uh, but probably there's going to be a major test uh, for us, Gürzel, but also for Imamoğlu's leadership as well, if they can manage this well. Uh, probably people who can see that they can be successful in the long term, their numbers will also increase. So uh, that's why the presidential elections will be sort of based on this success or this failure in, uh, in March municipal elections. True. And people are looking up to them. I mean, people want to remain hopeful. You know, this is how you can ha hang on to life because things are not doing well in Turkey. Uh, the, the, the inflation is really, really high. I want to show you another poll done by Ipsos. I mean, let me show you this one. Hold on. This is about dollar. Yeah. Are you happy with the economy in Turkey? 76% say they're not happy with the, with the with the with the economy. Only 3% is happy. Only 3% say yeah, the economy is doing really well. 76% is I really I want the root they are really I mean, can you imagine 76%? And actually, this was uh, only 64, I mean, not only, but only 64% of people were really unhappy with the economy during the election time. So now it's risen, you see, it's it's 70, 76%. So it, this is not little. Inflation, because people were expecting some sort of amelioration as well, and it's not happening. Exactly. And it doesn't seem to happen before uh, before the municipal elections either. Yeah, true. So I mean, so I mean, this this is the case you see, and people, how are you going to hang on to life? I mean, there are now stories, like especially in Germany and England, they are having huge number of Turks trying to seek refuge in England and Germany due to economic reasons, mostly actually. England is asking Turkey to stop this refugee Turkish refugee influx to England. I mean, which is really shameful. So this is people are trying to escape this poverty, basically, unfortunately. And this, I think, has happened all, like for the first time in in the history of Republic, or only in the 1980 coup. I think the coup d'état. It was horrendous. People escaped to Europe. It was it was never this bad. It, it is it is horrible. So what are people going to hang on to? They want to hang on to the opposition. They want to see hope in the opposition. So that's why people are looking up to, to the opposition, to Özgür Özel and Ekrem Imamoğlu. And 2028, I mean, Erdogan will be really old by then. I guess older yeah. than Biden right now is, or I'm not sure, <laughs> but something like that. You know, so... Yeah, I mean, this, these is, are the new generation of leaders somehow. Exactly. So old people are ruling the world. Leaders, yeah. Sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but that's also why I guess um, municipal elections will be much more than just municipal elections. I mean, and probably people also need this sort of uh, motivation as well. So probably we'll yeah. be talking about the elections more and more. I mean, each time there's like a new one. When it's lost, people believe that, okay, this time it's over, 
and then we cannot change this and then a few months is over and then people are motivated again that's also uh interesting um motivation uh among Turks mm -hmm. and let's see how motivated they are going to be for the president uh, for exactly. the next election we'll because be. many people were even thinking that okay I won't vote again but yeah I'm sure I'm sure they will go and vote again that mood has changed in like a month yeah, yeah. Now, I mean we'll be talking about local elections and the dynamics whatnot here in talk Turkey of course certainly till the next okay. episode then bye exactly thank you guys for watching bye Thank you.